We have a Pratt truss bridge, which is referring to the, the shape of the bridge. There's different types of trusses. And it says, determine the forces in LD, LK, CD, and KD. So you could solve this using the method of joints, or you could solve it with the method of sections. If you're doing either, you still have to work out what the reactions are. So the first thing that we're going to do is work out what the reactions are. Like if we looked at the, the sum of forces horizontally, we've got this A there's no horizontal forces other than this reaction. So our A X equals zero. If we looked at, at our forces vertically, we've got AY plus GY going upwards. Coming downwards, we've got these 350s. So we've got two unknowns, so we do have to take moments around one of the reactions to get another formula. So if we take moments around point A, we ignore AX and AY. So we have 50, so there is this is 18 metres long, so it's, it's 6, 3 metres. So we've got 3 times by 50. 6 times by 50. And 9 times by 50. And then going the other way, we've got 18 times by GY. All of that equals zero. Our GY equals 50. And our, therefore, when we put that into this formula here, our AY is 100. What we'll do now, we'll create a section through this point here. So we, we'll, we'll slice through this point so that we can find out what LK, LD, and CD is. You could slice through that way to try and find out what KD is. If we looked at joint K, We've got the, the node, we've got a 50 coming down. We've got KD going upwards, and then we've got two horizontal members. If you just resolve that as a joint, your KD equals 50. So that's one of your answers. So we don't have to slice through KD. So because I've sliced through these three here, I'm just going to draw out the, the right hand side of the of the truss again.
So I'm, cre I'm creating a section now. So there's my, that's my K, D. Wherever you slice through a member, you have to turn that into a force. So we've got our LK. I've got my LD and my CD. I don't have to draw in these other members because it's only when you slice through the members that you actually consider them as a, as a force. Sometimes um, seeing these extra members, you get com confused whether you should include them or not. But if we slice through, the only thing that we have to consider is the external forces. So all we have is this reaction G, and then we have three members that we've cut through. Now we have to guess arrow directions. Now what I'll say is that if we, if we were holding on to point D, and imagined this moving around my finger here, this 50 would be pushing around anti-clockwise. Therefore, this LK must be trying to send the beam round clockwise. I don't consider LD or CD because it's passing through um, the point that I'm taking moments around. And we can guess the the other directions. You know, we've got a 50 going up. We could say L, LDs going downwards. And if both of those arrows are pushing the whole frame to the right, we could say that CD is going to the left. And we need on here the 50... coming down at K. So whenever you, you split your, your um, section by the method of sections and consider a side, you include all of the external forces and each member that you cut through becomes an external force that you have to consider. So where, where would you be taking moments around? Because to try and remove two or more unknowns, these, the unknowns that we have are CD, LD, and LK. If you took moments around this point L, even though it's not on the frame, that would take out this LK and LD. So therefore you'd end up with this 50 this 50 and this CD. You could also take moments around D, which would take out LD and CD. So if we take moments around um, D, some moments around D equals zero, we have this distance, and so everything, we'll say that everything going around um, clockwise is going to be positive. So if we take moments around this point, we have CD passed through that point, we ignore it. LD passed through that point, we ignore it. And that 50 passed through that point, so we ignore it. So we've got LK multiplied by the perpendicular distance, which is 4.
and then the only other force is this 50 here so we've got minus 50 times by 369 9 meters equals 0 so you can work out what LK is which is um, 112.5 kilonewtons. So that LK, it's, we've got, um, it's positive, so that L, LK is pointing outwards. Is that tension or compression? Compression. Because it's pushing outwards, therefore this force, is, this, this force is pushing in, and it's having to resist and push outwards, so therefore it's in compression. If we take, if we take moments around K, we'd have sort of CD and LD on a strange angle. Um, you could also look sort of horizontally or, or vertically. If we um, let's what, see what we'll do. Let's let's write some of these formulas out. So if we did some of forces um, horizontal, we've got, and we said that everything's going to the right is going to be positive. We've got our L K, and going the other way, we've got this C D. So minus C D. Then we've got this LD. Now, how much of that LD acts horizontally? Now, this is where you've got to work out the angle. This angle here. We worked out what the angle theta is. That distance is four, and that distance is three. That ends up being that theta is 53.13. So we've got LK, CD going the other way, and then LD is going to the right also, so it's plus LD, and then how much of that LD is acting um, horizontally, so that's the cosine 53.13. All of that equals zero. We could also look at our sum of forces vertical. So if we were doing that, we've got 50 coming down. So we've got this 50 coming down, so minus 50 coming down. Then we've got 50 going up. And then we've got this LD. Sign the angle of 53.13 equals zero. Now from that, our LD equals zero. So we've got our LK, we've got our LD, we put those two in, then you can find out what your CD is.